untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today I was taking a look at a red-green modified deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring some of the new cards from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, and one of the build-around cards in our deck is Invigorating Hot Spring, a 3-mana uncommon enchantment that enters with 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, saying modified creatures we control have haste. Now modifications include equipment, auras we control, and counters, that are placed on our creatures, so plus one plus one counters from Hot Spring also count as a modification for our creatures. We can remove a plus one plus one counter from Hot Spring to move it onto a creature we control, can only use it once each turn and only at sorcery speed. So Hot Spring can modify four different creatures potentially and give them four additional power and toughness as well. So great synergy in our modified deck that also has some plus one counter synergy. So let's take a look at the rest of our deck, starting out at 1 mana, with the full playset of Kumano faces Kakazan, a 1 mana enchantment saga that on chapter 1 deals 1 damage to each opponent and each planeswalker they control. On chapter 2, whenever we cast our next creature spell this turn, it enters with an additional plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so another way of modifying our creature. And then finally transforms into Etching of Kumano, a 2-2 enchantment creature with haste, saying if a creature dealt damage, this turn by a source we controlled would die, exile it instead, which can also come up. Then we've got three copies of a rabbit battery, a 1-1 artifact creature with haste, but we can also reconfigure it onto one of our creatures, in which case it turns into an equipment, giving the equipped creature plus one plus one and haste, so that also counts as a modification. Then at 2 mana we've got a full playset of Kami's Flare as a main interaction in our deck, dealing 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker, and then we get to deal 2 additional damage to that permanence controller if we control a modified creature, which we can pretty easily enable. Then we also have the full playset of a Lizard Blades, a 1-1 artifact creature with double strike, so perfect to curve Kumano into a turn to a Lizard Blade, so it comes in with a plus 1 plus 1 counter, and then we can also reconfigure it onto a creature giving it double strike. Then we've got Uprizer Renegade, a 1-3, saying it gets plus 2 plus 0 for each author modified creature we control. So that can easily be a 2 mana 5-3 in the mid to late game, and that's a pretty good deal. Then at 3 mana, besides our Hot Spring, we've got the full playset of Oren Reef Ooze, a 2-2 creature that enters and gets to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature we control, including itself potentially. And whenever the ooze attacks, we can put a plus one plus one counter on each attacking creature with a plus one plus one counter on it. So ooze has great synergy with hot spring, as we can get it in play, potentially put the counter on itself. Then we still get to move a, an extra counter from hot spring somewhere to then enable the ooze, which can attack right away and put more plus one counters on the entire team. Then we've got two copies of Kodama of the West Tree, a 3-3 legendary spirit with a reach. That says modified creatures we control have trample, which is an important keyword when playing an aggressive deck, making it more difficult for the opponent to chum block with their smaller creatures. And then whenever a modified creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we get to search our library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped, so it can generate extra mana. Then we also have two copies of Jugon Defense the Temple, very powerful and synergistic card in our deck, although only can play so many 3-drops, so only have room for two of them. On chapter 1 it creates a 1-1 one, one human monk creature token that taps for green. On chapter 2 we can put a plus one plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures, and finally transforms into Remnant of the Rising Star, a 2-2 enchantment creature with flying, that when another creature enters the battlefield under our control, lets us pay X mana to put X plus one plus one counters on that creature, and as long as we control five or more modified creatures, then Remnant gets plus five plus five and has Trample, so that's another nice bonus if the game stalls out. And then at four mana we've got some more powerful additions, with three copies of Thundering Raiju, a 3-3 spirit with haste, that when it attacks it gets to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, and then the Raiju deals X damage to each opponent, where X is the number of modified creatures we control, other than Thundering Raiju. So by itself it can be a 4-4 with haste essentially, but of course with all the plus one counter and modified synergies we can easily deal more damage thanks to the ability. 
And then we also have three copies of Halana and Alena, the partners, a 2-3 legendary creature with first strike and reach, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn, put X plus one plus one counters on another target creature we control, where X is Halana and Alena's power, and that creature also gains haste until end of turn. So incredibly powerful if we can put some additional counters on the partners, so their power goes up and we get to put more counters on our creatures, just gives us a very powerful late game if it goes unanswered. And then our mana base includes the full playset of Den of the Bugbear as our creature land of choice. Turns into a 3-2 that makes a 1-1 goblin that's tapped and attacking. And then we've got, of course, a couple basic lands to fetch up with Kodama. Six mountains, four forests. We've got our legendary lands. Crucible can make a pair of 1-1 tokens with haste. And Boseju to deal with artifacts, enchantments and non-basic lands. And then we've got our pathway and our Rockfall Veil. Vale. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand, assuming we can find an extra land along the way. Our opponent with a generous visitor, so an enchantment deck. For now, probably go for Lizard Blades. And keep the Kami's Flare to maybe answer a 2-drop. Weaver of Harmony, grows a Visitor. But they're not gonna trade. So now I could play the Hot Spring, put a counter on the blade so it can attack. Seems fine. And next turn we've got a few options, maybe Kodama with a plus one counter and haste. Opponent's got the borrow time, unfortunately. Let's see if they go for the hot spring or the blades. Goes for the blades. Take five. Could double renegades and give one of them haste. Although, then it would not have the plus 2 plus 0 bonus. Could also Renegade plus Kami's Flare, kill the Visitor while we still can. That might be better. I'm probably fine to hit for 2. And then with a lance, I could play both Renegade and Kodama. Otherwise, probably Kodama. Another Borrow time. Goes for the Hot Spring this time. And our opponent can double the trigger with Weaver. Ouch. Yeah, so that also gets rid of the Renegade. Alright, we'll need some help. Probably go for Ooze. And that plus Kodama could be pretty nice. Sigardo Splendor, gonna try and draw some cards. Okay, so get to play Kodama. Trampling the Ooze, which will put counter on itself. And get to search up a land. Play Renegade. And hope for some of our powerful 4 drops. Reconfigure equipment would also come in handy. The Naturalists gonna gain a life. Gets bumped by the Weaver, so 3-3 three, three life linker. And Reign of Truth for one mana. Can pump Weaver. So that's a lot of damage coming in. Next turn they can pump the Life Linker, so we're gonna have to force them to jump to have a chance here. Alright, partners, right on time.
and then probably pump Kodama. So that also grows a Renegade. And attack with everyone. The ooze grows. And our opponent's gonna have to trump. Alright, we get to trade for both creatures, that's excellent. Opponent goes to four after gaining three. And we still get to search up two lanes to thin out the deck. Sadly, don't have a creature land in play to make use of. But hopefully we're in a winning position now. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one Kumano, turn two... We've got a couple options. Probably still go for Renegades, even though getting the counter on battery would grow the Renegade. Adversary. Ooh, nice. Lizard Blades is probably the play now. Also blocks the Adversary nicely, so we'll require an answer. And then next turn we can maybe double spell. So up against Mono White. Can be a tough matchup. But we can try and go over the top with some of our powerful 4 drops. Apparition answers the blades, that's too bad. So now can play battery Kami's Flare or just Renegade plus battery. Probably fine to trade Kumano for Apparition. And then the question is what to do with adversary, don't really want my opponent gaining three repeatedly. So... Yeah, I guess we'll attack. See what they do. And then I can just try to block the adversary with a battery, even if that potentially means losing our modified enabler. Thalia makes my Kami's Flare more expensive. And our opponent passes. Okay. Probably just hang on to Kami's Flare. And then I could also move the battery somewhere. If I move it onto the etching, it also grows the Renegade. Then if I were to attack, how does our opponent block? I guess if I kill the adversary, I would have a reasonable attack. Yeah, maybe that's the play. And this way the Kami's Flare deals more damage. Send in both, and I'm fine with any trade. Got another Renegade to give haste to next turn. Opponent takes six. Ooh, Adlan's a good one. Gets to make a token right away. I'm not sure if they drew it or uh, if they had it last turn and still played Thalia first. Okay, Raiju could help. So I could play the Raiju. And then... Could put the counter on itself. So the Renegade also gets to attack. And then keep the etching on defense. Because you have to be careful with where I move the rabbit battery, so the renegade still gets the plus two plus so bonus twice. So yeah, Raiju. And then I think it's just attack with Raiju and Renegade, counter on Raiju itself. As opposed to moving the battery onto the Raiju. And then I guess I could put the counter on the etching. I guess that also works.
opponent trades. And next turn, Renegade plus Equip Battery should be pretty nice. Although we'll see. Cave comes into play tapped. And the backup Adlon makes sense. Although we have a 3 3 on defense now. Also have a Den of the Bugbear, which could turn into a creature. Another Raichu, don't mind if I do. So, is it the same play as last time? Seems so. Play Raiju, put the battery on it, put the counter somewhere else, and in this case I could put it on Etching, so Etching can also attack. So I'll get past Adlin. And our opponent's gonna have to make some trades. Alright, opponent keeping Adlin alive. Falls to one. And a Blade Historian. Uh oh, are we dead? Yeah, that's an unexpected Blade Historian to close out the game. So yeah, close one nonetheless. Opponent had one life, so could not have been any closer. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Battery into Blades into Defense the Temple, and then Kodama can synergize with those plus one counters and all the modified creatures. Turn one Generous Visitor, so another enchantment deck. Kumano is interesting. I think we still play the blades here to be mana efficient. And I'm fine with the trade. So mono green so far. And probably attack with both and then play defense the temple. Alright, and next turn the plus one counters will count as modifications to enable Kodama. Opponents, yeah, still mono green. Ooh, Raichu. So definitely counter on the blades, and then, yeah, counter on battery maybe. Could play Kumano plus Raichu, and then save Kodama for next turn. So let's try that. Counter on itself. And our opponent's under quite a bit of pressure. Not sure if they're missing a color or if they just have a slow deck. But they're at six. Don't expect any sweepers here, so. Yeah, opponent's very far behind and explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Turn one Kumano, turn two Renegade. Ideally we have a different creature to pick up the plus one counter, so Renegade gets an additional bonus from controlling other modified creatures. But uh, still better than not having a creature to play on turn two.
And then next turn we could Kumano plus Kami's Flare. Deal with the Wolf Token. And then next turn the Raichu will pick up the counter from Chapter 2. Alright, so a nice aggressive start on the play is where we like to be. Let's see how our opponent recovers. Maybe an old growth troll could be a powerful blocker here. Yeah, opponent just leveling up Ranger class, so pretty weak turn for them. And uh, partners might be better than Raichu here, although it's close. Yeah, the fact that it gets a counter is pretty tempting. Although, of course, Raichu can also put counters on partners, but after the trigger already happened. So let's go for partners. And that will grow the Renegade twice. Opponent's at one. And I don't really see them recovering. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Our ranks just reset in the middle of recording our video. So hopefully they present a nice target for Kami's Flare, or we draw something else we can play. And then Ooze plus Raichu is an excellent combo. Opponent also red-green. Could be werewolves. Ranger class. Alright, let's kill the wolf. And then do we put the counter on the ooze itself or the battery? Red, green. I mean, it could have three damage removal spells. Although I don't really expect them. And then I might prefer the counter on the ooze. And then Raiju can potentially put the counter somewhere else next turn. So close call. Yeah, let's put it on the ooze itself. Alright, opponent's got a Thundering Rebuke, sadly. Play Raichu. And I'll go for Count from Battery now. And then we might channel the Crucible next turn. Tovalar confirms Werewolves. And Partners has to be better than uh, anything else here. Counter on maybe Raichu and then Raichu on battery. Alternative was potentially using Raichu to put counter on partners, so that becomes bigger. Opponents forced to trade and we'll keep the channel ability. Another Tovalar. And our opponent's just desperately behind. Next turn we can put counters from partners on Raichu, counters from Raichu on partners, and our opponent has no good blocks and uh, is pretty much dead. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. Well, let's see what we're up against. Looks like Mono White's turn 1 Escort. Don't really want to trade battery for Escort, so I'll just chill. Alright, Red White instead. Turn to Aspirant, not what we wanted to see. Puts counter on itself. Partners will be excellent though. So Hot Spring, and then I can activate it on battery, attack with both. And they can trade Escort for Battery, or I can just send the Renegade. Hmm, interesting choice. I think we'll just send the Renegade. Otherwise they would just block with Aspirant, make it indestructible, and kill my Battery. Which may or may not be worth it, but... 
when we have more modified synergies coming up. I could see the benefit of keeping battery alive. Alright. Ignition is going to make it difficult to race. 5-5, five, five, trampling, indestructible life linking, aspirants. So we somehow need to go bigger. Which probably means playing partners, putting a counter on it. And then I can distribute some counters around. Since Raiju is not going to have an easy time attacking. I mean, I guess I could still play it, put a counter on it with Hot Spring, put a counter on itself, but then it still trades for an Escort, which doesn't seem very good. And then now the Renegade can attack. Opponent takes eight. Another ignition, so opponent's gonna be casting ignition for the rest of the game if they can hit their land drops, which we're probably not gonna be able to beat. The lifelink just makes it difficult to race. So now I could play Raiju. And then what? Could move the battery. Yeah, the escort makes attacking pretty awkward here. So the renegades may not want to attack. But I can move the battery onto Raiju. Actually, should have put the counters on partner still. Opponent takes it. Gotta hope there's no land here. All the sky clays for flying. I guess forces a block from partners. So we're not dead yet. And Aspirant actually stays back. Well, we're still at a point where if they draw land for Ignition, we're dead. So what's the best I can do here? This deals one, can turn on then. And which counters go where? Could also move the battery. Opponent's at 10. So the Escort can give lifelink and indestructible. Yeah, that's gonna make it impossible to attack here. So good hope they miss on a land for another turn. And I have to keep the partners back. Which means moving all in on the Raiju. But I guess I'm still better off putting the hot spring counter on the partners, which I should have done last turn. And yeah, there's no chance the Renegade gets to attack here. Could also move the battery onto the partners. Just to give it more power. So that's going to force him to sacrifice Escort. We'll put counter on Renegade since I'm probably going to have to sacrifice the partners. Opponent gains 11. And then at 6 toughness, if they add what is essentially 3 more counters, 14 power, 
minus 6 is 8. So yeah, we would still take a lethal even if I leave the battery on partners and chump. So might as well move the battery somewhere else, preparing for next turn. Assuming I just chump the aspirant if it attacks. And then I guess it makes sense to put it on the renegade. Alright, fourth line comes into play tapped. So he may not be dead yet. Another maul. Okay, but Aspirin's gonna stay back. 14-14. Okay. Now what? There's no lifelink to worry about anymore. So if I turn on Den of the Bugbear... Counters from partners can go on, let's say, Den. Attack with everyone, they block Raiju. Then they still seem dead to me. Although I could move the battery somewhere else too if I want to. And our opponent explodes. Wow, oof, what a close game. That land coming to play tapped saved us, but uh, yeah, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Probably go for turn two blades, which benefits more from the plus one counter. Opponent blue-black, so control deck. Nice change of pace. As per control. Okay, so... Tank first. Could play around Jory Disruption. Don't know if an Esper deck necessarily plays it. And then go for Defensive Temple, second main. Right, and they've got the Vanishing Verse for the Blades, that's fine. Next turn I could play Raichu, if our monk survives. Celestus for ramp. Okay, so two counters. And then what's the next move? Could also try and play around a sweeper a little bit better. By making use of the um, reconfigure on rampant battery. And maybe go for a hasty renegade here. Also kind of like that idea. So I can play renegades. And then I guess I'm unable to play the battery from hand and reconfigure it. But I could reconfigure the one in play. If we really want to play around a board wipe. Otherwise I could just play the Raichu and smash. And then depending on which board wipe they have that could be good or bad. But I'll still be able to follow up with Renegade Battery and have Defensive Temple transforming. So maybe going for Raiju is still the play. Points at 7. And is there something like Doomscar? Yep. Alright, it's too bad. Okay, so what's next? Probably involves reconfiguring rabbit battery. So I can play it. Pay, I guess, two mana to put counters on it from the remnant and then attach it to the remnant itself. Because I don't think it makes sense to try and play two creatures out if I can't attack with anything. And this is better protection in case of another board wipe. And then maybe next turn we can haste the Oran Reef Ooze. Cool. 
Kumano. Yeah, let's start by playing the Ooze, I think. And then we'll put counter on the remnants. And then move battery onto Ooze. Could also just unconfigure the battery because it's a 3 3 as a base. And then they might have the Wandering Emperor to kill one of my creatures, but we'll still be in a reasonable spot. So Remnant down, opponent takes three. Keep watch for intruders. Okay. So now what? The ooze does not have any counters on it, sadly. If I play Renegade and give it haste, then it doesn't pick up the bonus, as I wouldn't control any modified creatures. I guess we can test out the waters with Kumano, see if there's a response. And then maybe just attack with the uh, ooze as is. Or I can unmodify the battery, but then if they have spot removal for battery and trade for ooze, we're not that happy. Close call. Maybe unmodifying is still the play. Memory Deluge to go digging. So they're looking for Vanishing Verse. Doesn't look like they found one. And then sadly don't have the red mana to reconfigure the battery, but... Good hope there's no board wiping coming. Farewell exiles everything. Haste creature of the top would have been nice. It's gonna be Renegade plus Kodama instead. Opponent gets to loot again. Gets rid of thirsts. Disruption comes into play tapped. If they got rid of thirst, their hand must be pretty good. Doomscar. Alright, a haste creature would have been nice, but uh, Ooze at least still presents lethal. Four mana deluge to try and find an answer. Yeah, having a creature land also could have made the difference. And if we can't keep up the pressure, opponent's quickly gonna take control of the game. Soren can make a vampire token to maybe survive. I'll take a Kami's Flare of the top now. There we go. And that closes out the game, oof. Incredibly close game against Asper Control. Needed every point of damage. So yeah, we got to see our red-green modified deck in action. And if you're looking for a fast deck to do your dailies, modified is a pretty good way to do it. But just a mono-red shell of uh, plus one counters and reconfigure creatures is a good starting point. But I do think that the green splash, if you've got uh, cards for it, is worth it, since the partners especially is incredibly powerful. And cards like Hot Spring and Ooze seem to add an extra dimension to the deck, so it can potentially go bigger against other creature strategies. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.